think I'm a bit weird. There we go. I think we're live. I'm not sure if we're live or if I'm, I don't know where we are this morning. Uh, can you tell me if we're live, Michelle? I'm we pretty are sure live. that we're live. So good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Gregor, who is, as always, standing to my right side. I would also like to say good morning to Kachoro, who is once again sleeping on the sofa next to me, totally and totally oblivious and unaware of the fact that here we are live on, on um, YouTube. Uh, and also, of course, my trusty steed here, not that that you know she's a horse i'm not suggesting that she's a horse but she's once again sitting on the floor say good morning michelle good morning everyone <laughs> so she's bit she's a bit like my who is it tonto to zorro is that did zorro was it zorro who had tonto no it wasn't was it it was um no, the lone ranger the lone ranger and tonto so we kind of like the lone ranger and tonto sometimes michelle's the lone ranger and sometimes i'm the I'm just the guy <laughs> picking up the pieces behind, <laughs> doing all the all that stuff. Anyway, I'm muttering away, and I'll stop. But see, even Kachoro has had enough of my blather and blathering. Uh, so um, uh, let me see. I don't know if any of you uh, were watching uh, the healing show yesterday, uh, Healing Hands Around the World. I told the story of... Um, of Bob and uh, I know that one or two of you uh, are waiting for the you know the rest of that story because it is a very long and a very interesting story because Bob was my patient for quite some time uh, but um, I'm not going to you know if you want to read the rest of that story let me see where you'll find it certainly in one of my books uh, it would probably be in I don't know which one um, but anyway, if you'd like to write in and you want to know the story, or if you want Bob's uh, CD, how much are the CDs, Michelle? Something like... I'll tell you in a second. They could be $12, they could be $15, I don't know. But anyway, if you want one, we do have them here. You can email us, or we have a place where we have them anyway. Uh, we could send you one. Uh, and um, you know t t uh, if you just email us and again let me let me do all that stuff at the beginning so if you want to be on our email list you must email us and request twelve dollars it's twelve dollars for the CD so there we are and I promise you it is a wonderful and inspirational uh, thing to listen to absolutely fabulous and once again I'll say you know to check it out because you'll find the hands around the world the healing uh, hour that we have usually on Wednesday afternoons you'll find it is it on YouTube at all did you you put it so it's on YouTube it's on Facebook it's all over the place so you can find it and uh, by all means listen to that story because Bob is one of the most inspirational of my patients he was a joy to be around and uh, and uh, we had great fun the two of us I know it's hard can you imagine that someone has a brain tumor and they know that they're dying and they know that their time is limited and here I am saying but we had such great fun and we did uh, sometimes you know the the facing immort facing mortality should I say not immortality facing mortality uh, is that thing that can actually sort of lift us and move us and get us going to making the most of our lives and Bob did have a very dry and a very uh, wonderful sense of humor uh, a bit like my own really in lots of ways so all right so today we are going to be answering some questions we are certainly if you've got questions out there you want you want answers do you you know the drill most of you who are who are regulars know the drill for those of you who uh, uh, it is your first time if you want to do a live chat with us then look at the bottom right hand corner of your screen you'll see the word chat click on that and that will take you right into our chat room where Michelle will field all of the questions and all of the chats and all of that stuff we go on this show for as long as we have uh, uh, questions so if you don't have questions you don't get very much from us so just you know by all means keep that going um, I realized this morning, I woke up this morning, I realized that 
I've got so little time left before Christmas. I bet you all are doing the same thing. I bet you all are thinking, ah, it's getting away from me. Everyone I've heard say something about Christmas this year has said, I can't believe it's going so fast. It's going so fast. And time, when you're having fun, that old adage, time flies when you're having fun and time flies when you're busy. Um, can you though, at least find that five minutes in the day to stop, take a breath, and to think of those in the spirit world who are with you, who are by your side, who just connect with you every time you think about them. Just take a breath and think about them and uh, say good morning to them or good afternoon them, to them. Or if you think of them at night time before you go to bed, by all means, say good night to them. We had a question this morning from Nettie. I will address that now. Yesterday, as I was talking about Bob's uh, story, Bob had it in his head at one point that, you know, he was going to get on the train. The train was what was going to take him on his journey to the spirit world. Remember, he was a little bit delirious at the time. Remember that he was sort of, he got it in his head that this is the way he wanted to go. And in his mind, he thought, he sort of just thought, what a great idea it would be if he got off or got on a train and they made various stops to pick people up along the way. A great visual, uh, you know, wonderful idea. But actually, uh, Nettie asked this morning, is there really a train? I guess we'd call it a ghost train, wouldn't they? Wouldn't we? Is there really a train that picks us up? And the answer is no. It is an idea that people have when they think about traveling. It could be a plane, it could be a train, it could be anywhere at all. But just to be clear, this is what happens when you are about to pass into the spirit world, your spirit housed in the etheric body, the etheric ET, E-T-A-G-R-I-C, the etheric or spirit body. It is the same shape, the same size, uh, the only thing it doesn't have of the physical body, it's the same shape and size as the physical body, the only thing it does not have is it does not have the aches and pains, it does not have the destruction that we see in the physical body often, it does not have the tumours or the cancer. Uh, if you have had to have a limb amputated, your etheric body will be whole with its limb intact. You cannot destroy the etheric body. And the etheric body is what houses the spirit, it's what houses the soul, and it is what we use to travel on and towards that next place. So our vehicle is our etheric body. We don't need a train or a plane or anything else. That's just our humanness kicking in and trying to help us to figure out, you know, the, 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 this incredible journey and, and it, it's just our humanness and it's a way of dealing with things and that was Bob's way of dealing with things. I know that Nettie said that when her friend died she saw a train or something. A train car. A train, train car. Mm -hmm. uh, and a fabulous and wonderful but again it is the human idea of travel it is the human idea it you know we are we are human we have these thoughts we have these things swirling around in our minds and sometimes it's very very hard for us to imagine that we have such a thing as an etheric body who ever heard of that anyway and what on earth does it mean uh, but we do in fact have the etheric body indestructible same shape and size and this is the vehicle that the soul uses to get from one place to another and it explains why uh, very often when I see people in the spirit world I see them in the same way that I would perhaps see them here on this earth and they will project that image uh, of what they looked like and who they were when they were on this earth plane they will project that image so that I can see them exactly as they used to be so I hope that's helpful. Michelle Let's, I'm going to Michelle, what we got? Star, actually, Starshine has a great question. Good morning, it's, Star. It says, Rosemary, you mentioned that every, every ha everyone has someone to meet them when they pass. Yes. 
why are there those lost souls that don't go into the spirit world but choose to stay in limbo? Because they decide. They make. Remember that I've always said uh, we have choices, and even in our passing, we have choices. So let's say, uh, let's say an angel comes and knocks at the door, right? We're having tea or we're reading a book or watching TV or whatever it is and a knock comes at the door and we know without a doubt that it's an angel. We can open the door, let the angel in or we can say, well, too bad for you because I'm busy doing something else or I don't want you at my door. So people can actually refuse. Um, when I used to do uh, rescue work, which I still occasionally will do when necessary, uh, then rescue work was about helping those souls who, for whatever reason, had a difficulty in accepting, in fact, that they, they have died, that they are dead, and they just refuse to go anywhere. No, I'm not moving, and you can, you can send as many angels as you like for me, but I'm not... I'm, I'm turning my back, I'm closing my eyes, or I'm just denying what's happened. So we have choices about that. So when we call them lost souls, basically they're lost in their own idea of I'm not ready to die yet, or I don't want to go, or I'm staying at, in, in the case of a little girl who, um, who I was sort of able to help uh, with, the, with the aid of Grey Eagle, of course, and my uh, and my team here, uh, we were able to help this little girl who had had severe, severe illness, very tremendous disabilities, and had been spoiled rotten by her family, as you can imagine, we all all do the same thing, wouldn't we? Uh, and so she was used to getting her own way, absolutely. And when it was when it was her time, she just she went part way uh, down the tunnel, and so I'm not. I'm not going anywhere unless my uh, my mummy comes with me, and so it was my job to uh, try to convince her that really, you know, darling, it's 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 lonely in here. It's you know, you don't you don't want to be stuck here. Uh, and we tried everything possible. Luckily, I'm very good with kids. Uh, I have a, a I have a way of uh, using psychology when I'm dealing with kids. Some kids, you know, if you ask them to do something, they'll do it uh, willingly, very nicely. Sometimes if you tell kids to do something, they might defy you a little bit because nobody likes being told what to do, do they? But sometimes, you know, you get a child who, if you say black, they say white. If you say up, they say down. Uh, and this child, this little girl, again, she was so used to having her own way that she just, you know, she was one of those kids, you know, you say black, she says white, you know. So it was very difficult for her uh, to understand that she, you know, she couldn't have her own way in this, but she was stuck, lost in her, in her determination to not go anywhere without her mummy, and th that was based on fear, of course, you know, and so it was my job to soothe her and to uh, to help her with the fear, but also it was my job to see if I could persuade her to move go to her angels who were waiting for her and the only way I was able to manage to do this and I do tell this story in one of my books in much more detail but it was it's a good story but the only way I was finally able to persuade her and again I use psychology with ch with children very often and I realized that if I said black she said white and up and she said down so I said to her well actually uh, having tried various ways to persuade her, I said, well, actually, you can't, you can't go. She said, I can if I want. I said, no, no, I don't think you can, darling. It's just, you know, I'm afraid you're going to have to stay where you are. You know, you just can't go. And uh, she's, she's sort of got really a, a little sulky with me. She said, I can do anything I want. I said, well, I, I, I really don't think that you can go down that tunnel see that light down there and those people are waiting for you I said I don't think you can go down there she said I can and I will and watch me and off she went and that was the only way we were able to manage to help her to get over the fear and to stop thinking about you know what was on the other side because it's just a fear-based thing that people do get do get stuck uh, and so uh, so a little psychology went a long way in that case 
let's I think I answered that question. Let's have another question, shall we? Yes? I have a question, since we're talking about ethereal bodies and such. You personally, Michelle? I personally. Oh, I didn't know if you were reading that. No, so I have a question. <laughs> okay. For our ethereal bodies, can we trim down the parts that we don't like and oh, you know, you mean kind of make us oh, feel... Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you're fat and you've been on a diet forever, but you sneaked, you know, out chips and things like that past when nobody was looking you mean though you know what I mean? yeah that, i mean are we or, be or if you <laughs> have a or if you have a condition which a lot of people have uh that uh, you know they're almost it's almost impossible for them to, to get skinny uh can you then yeah can we take some of our impurities away when we go to our ethereal body being fat is not an impurity no i maybe. meant like I mean, if you had a like, skin condition where you, you were Oh, or you're the, you okay. Have, you know, big S moles. Right. Or... Okay, S a skin condition. Remember that that's a physical thing. The etheric body is perfect, shit perfect in every way. You know, you don't have those blemishes. You don't have, you know, you don't have three fingers. You you have five, whatever it is. Uh, but um, the the fat or the thin or the changing shape and so on and so forth. I think you'll find that it becomes completely and absolutely unimportant. Uh, when you're, you know, you're traveling through time and space, right? The last thing you're thinking about is, oh God, I really need to lose weight. So I think, you know, you you become who you feel you are. Okay, so if I feel like I'm a thin person when I die, that's who I'm going to become in there. Sort of. Okay. Let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> Kevin has a question. All right. Yes. And he who wants is to know... this, Kevin? This Good morning, is our Kevin. Kevin. Yes. It says. He would like to know if you've ever contacted a famous person in the spirit world. Oh, many times. That's that's what you're getting. Um, I, I cannot. Oh, Dean responded, told him to check back a couple weeks ago that you talked about speaking to Elvis. Oh, <laughs> yes, I did speak to Elvis. I can talk about that because there were lots of other people there who witnessed that and they witnessed the information which I couldn't have gotten anywhere other than from Elvis. It does sound really weird though. I have to say that if I heard someone say, I've been talking to Elvis, trust me, I am the most skeptical person in the world and I would have doubted it totally, but there we are. I know I'm putting myself up for ridicule when I say it, but I have to be perfectly honest in what I'm doing. But I can't discuss uh, people, you know, famous people that I've talked to or connected with because uh, when I do a consultation, it's private and, uh, and confidential and that's the way it stays. But good question, Kevin, nevertheless. Let's have another question. Good morning, okay. Dean, by the way. Okay. Thank you. He's always there to sort of... He'll say, he'll, Rose he'll wrote me this, he'll say, Dean, Dean will say, well, <laughs> Rose, in one of book, her books, Rosemary wrote this, this, and this, or, well, Rosemary says this and this, and uh, he's, he's quite an expert on the things that I've said and done, but I always <laughs> wonder what's when he, when he says, when Dean says, well, Rosemary says, and I'm thinking, Ooh, you know, what did I say, what did he, what is he going to say that I've said now? <laughs> anyway, yeah. All right, Mary is on. Good morning, Mary. And she says, I felt my loved one in the spirit world in my dreams last night. Oh, nice. Um, You're going to ask how you know it's real, right? No. Oh, good. Oh. It says, <laughs> please, ask, please ask Gray Eagle or my family if they think I have an immediate health issue or advice from them. Uh, I wouldn't normally do this because it's that Gray Eagle has his hand on my shoulder, so... Uh, um, so Mary, I think, uh, I think, yes, you have actually one or two small problems, nothing that you can't cope with, nothing that you can't deal with, nothing great, nothing terrible. Uh, but you might want to go and get yourself checked out, my darling, and uh, maybe pay attention to your diet a little bit. Not about losing weight, just pay attention to that. Next, let's have another one. Is there a next? Is there anybody there? Everybody's saying hello. Uh, Starshine uh, is uh, laughing uh. at my question. And um, <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good question. Well, I just I've wanted been, to know. I have been asked it so many times, you know, am I still fat or do I still have only one leg or, 
you know, uh, I've always wanted to be blonde, can I be brunette, this sort of thing, people <laughs> ask all of those questions, so it's quite a, not, a, a usual question, okay, go we're for quiet it, right now. Huh? we're quiet right now, oh, nobody has a question, it'll only last for about four seconds because you said nobody has a question, One. and we're going to get off the phone, <laughs> we're going to get Two. off, <laughs> come on everybody, <laughs> Uh, we we like audience participation and we rely on audience participation. This is not about me talking and all of you listening. This is about, you know, I mean, what exactly, ha, how about this? Here you are, I'm going to throw this out at you all and, and you can all answer, right? What specifically, what areas of my work or stories or anything, what specifically would you like me to talk about this morning? And if I don't get any answers, I'm going to just assume that you don't want me to talk about anything at all and that will be it. I mean, come on, I look, I'm wearing my Christmas glitter here. See the Christmas, see the sparkly thing? I'm wearing my Christmas glitter. I just kicked the table, it hurts. Um, <laughs> Twiggy has an off topic question for you. Oh. Okay, and she would like to know what some of your favorite YouTube channels are. Oh, uh, okay. Well, of course, I do like the British shows. Uh, there is a such a funny, funny show. Uh, I think it's been on for a, for a long, long time, but I came across it accidentally just a few weeks ago, and it's it's a it's a uh, um, do you call it a panel show? There are there are two two teams of three and a and, like a, and, a, game a, show? and a compare well it's actually would i lie to you? it's called would i lie to you and the, the contestants have to pull up a card they're given a card they've never seen it before they don't know what's in it sometimes what's on the card is true and sometimes what's on the card is a, is a lie but they have to whatever it is the person who has the card has to tell a story which convinces the other panel right that it's true or a lie or whatever and then that team have to say whether it's a lie or whether it's true it is the funniest because the banter that goes back and forth is so hilarious and the the two guys who are who are leading the teams are so sharp so fast so quick so funny and i sit there really chuckling away but one of my other favorites is the graham norton show i like the graham norton show uh, because you know I'm British, so it takes me home. And they always have. He always has brilliant guests. Very often American, mostly American actually. Movies. He has movie stars. He has famous writers. He has all of those people who sit on the sofa. So when people come to my house and they sit on my sofa, I kind of you know emulate Graham Norton a little bit, except you know he has all of these super super superstars. Uh, so that they're my two. Uh, I also uh, have a, a channel that I pay something, it's a ridiculous amount a year for, it's called Acorn, uh, it's one of those, it's a bit like Netflix, but it's British shows and some Australian shows, but they have all the old comedies, they have all sorts of things going on. That's my, I don't watch a great deal of TV, but late at night, when everyone else is in bed, sort of 12 o'clock-ish, I'll often think, oh, let me put on Graham Norton, or let me put on Would I Lie to You, because they're both funny shows. I just like to be entertained, and British humour is what entertains me. Do we have any other questions, um, or comments, or star, anything? Starshine, she wants to know if our loved ones still celebrate their Earth birthdays. Um, for as long as we celebrate them, they celebrate them. But it is, yes, I think, you know, I think, I think we, we do once we pass into the spirit world. I think we do for, certainly for quite some time. And, and those are the times when our families who are still, who we left behind, those families are still here uh, and they think of us and they celebrate us. So it's kind of a very poignant uh, time for us and in you know when so people in the spirit world I think do remember and 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 uh, do celebrate and do have something to think about because you know our birthday yes it's the day that we were born but once we're in the spirit world and we do understand fully that we are souls who have 
had this fabulous experience of this earth plane. I think that we would celebrate it for uh, other reasons than we're another year older, so to speak. We also celebrate it because, you know, this was our opportunity. We were given this opportunity to have this fantastic life, this earth experience of ours. And so there's a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be grateful for in that as well. Yes, next. Lori has a question. Good morning, Lori. It says, when you have visitors from the spirit world, even if they don't know each other here, do they meet up and visit you together sometimes? Uh... Yes, yes, they sometimes, yes, sometimes it happens. Um, when you say they don't know each other, here's the thing. Remember that the Great Eagle is, it's, he's, he's like the doorkeeper. You know, I talked earlier about, earlier on, you know, the angel knocks at the door and it's our choice to open the door and let someone in or not to let someone in. So Great Eagle is sort of like, he, 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 What's the matter? What did you do? I just kicked you the hurt table yourself? and hurt my toe. Um, this is what comes with sitting on the floor. Uh, oh. So, yes, Gregle is the doorkeeper. And he, you know, he says who's going to come in and who's not going to come in. And I totally rely on him because his, his role, part of his role is to protect me and to make sure that, you know, that the people who come into my life from the spirit world are people who we can trust and who we can rely on. So... You know, so that's, you know, so it, part of his role is to ensure that uh, whoever's coming in uh, it, it can can do so easily and uh, and it's a good thing for me as well as for them. Um, but often people gather prior to g coming to visit, they, whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, people gather and it's, you know, kind of like if someone in the spirit world knows this person and that person, but they don't know each other, then, you know, it's like everybody gets together, they introduce each other, you get to know each other. That so much preparation goes into the or to the coming. It's not it's not a random thing. You don't just get someone from the spirit world say, oh, well, here I am. You, that can't happen. Uh, because, you know, especially it can't happen with me because I have Gregel who to makes sure absolutely that whoever comes in has been prepped, that they know what they're doing, they know how to do it. We try to make it as easy for them as possible to communicate. Uh, but, you know, crowds of people very often can get together and say, but, but well, I, I'd like to go, well, I'd like to go. Well, can I come with you? Even though we don't know each other, can I come with you anyway? That sort of thing goes on. So it's, you know, so I think, did I, I think I answered that question. All right. I think you answered that. Julia's on, and she morning, said, "My twenty Julia, Julia, Julia. Good morning, Julia. My twenty-five-year-old daughter is moving from Florida to California in a few weeks. Oh. I'm very happy and sad. Is there any advice? Uh, I'd like to know why you're sad. Uh, maybe she's maybe she's moving away from from you. But I think this is a wonderful opportunity." For her and a chance for a new life and you you simply got to just whatever it is you know with our children whether we agree or whether we don't agree whether we like it or whether we don't like it our role is to be there to support them to encourage them in their goals in in their wants and their needs it's not about us anymore although it really is about us isn't it because we get heartbroken and we get you know so we you know, we want our children close by us. My daughter and my grandson live in New York City. If they lived closer, I'd be on the doorstep every minute of the day, probably, which wouldn't work for any of us, would it? But still, you, you know, look, I FaceTime with my daughter and my grandson uh, at least once or twice a day. <laughs> so, uh, you can do that with your daughter. Don't feel, you know, don't feel that you can't connect. Um, I talk to my grandson every single night before he goes to bed. I have my bedtime call. I will not, no matter where I am and no matter what I'm doing, I will not give up that call. I can be in the middle of a conference. I can be in the middle of uh, something, but I will stop for that. It might be five seconds or it might be five minutes and I will stop for that call because that is part of you know the family family come first but you know even though the the, the joy of of, uh, of this amazing technology that we have although it, it brings with it a lot of awful stuff the joy of it is that you can 
I mean, I meet a friend of mine every now and again, and we we ask come over for drinks, and she's in England, and I'm here. Come over, come over for drinks, and we just sit, and she gets a drink, and I get a drink, and we sit there, and we chat just as if we're in each other's living room. So it's not so bad. Just try and remember that. Hold on, hold up, be supportive of your daughter. Yeah. All right, we have Leah on, and she says, Morning, Sorry, Leah. my English is not so good. We're fine. Love to hear more about Grey Eagle and love from Holland. Oh, Leah. Uh, I, I remember I've been, I've been to Holland several times. I was on the uh, Tinica show, uh, and uh, uh, it was an amazing show. I, I will briefly tell you a story. I, went, I, I was in England at the time, and I had to fly over to Holland to do uh, a, a TV show. It was a very famous TV show at the time. It's a long time ago. And there was a woman from Belgium who, Belgium who they brought onto the show. I'd never met her before. Um, and the only thing I was asked, would I be willing to talk to a lady whose uh, daughter was missing? And that was all I was told. I immediately said, yes, I would. Uh, it turned out that her daughter and her son had gone missing. Uh, it also turned out that the daughter was murdered a very in a very gruesome way. Uh, I was able to describe this on the on TV. Uh, I drew an area where they would find, you know, the uh, bits and pieces of this girl who had been murdered, uh, and. Um, uh, Apparently, the police contacted me afterwards because everything that I said was accurate, including the things that they hadn't published. Uh, unfortunately, they had no clue what had happened to the boy, but as I was talking to the daughter, I saw the boy as well. So we were all pretty certain that he had also passed. Um, the mother knew this. You can imagine doing this on a television show. It was very intense and I had to do it very carefully and very gently. I think I managed to do that and I think you might. Any of you who wish to go and search it out on YouTube, I'll guarantee you'll find it on YouTube because can't we find everything on YouTube? Pretty and close. And, uh, pardon? It's a pretty close to everything. Yeah. So, uh, who? This lady, what her name, whatever her name is, Leah. Leah. So Leah, maybe you could. So you might have more uh, success than we do. The TV show was the Tinica show, and she was. This lady was so lovely. She was. She was a little bit like the Oprah Winfrey of Holland, and um, and it was an amazing show. So please, all of you, do check it out. It it, it was a very very difficult. To have to sit and face a mother and hold a mother's hands and tell her not only she knew that her daughter had been murdered because they'd found the body, uh, but to have to tell her that her son had died as well was t tough. But that's my job. And I told her in the carefulest and the most gentle way we possibly could. And, um, you know, so uh, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> she just said she'd like to hear more about Grey Eagle and that she oh, right. sends love and from thank, Holland. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, and and uh, of course, Grey Eagle was right there with me and helping and guiding me uh, because I can't possibly do it without him. Now, can I? I mean, he he is my guide. He is my teacher. He is my mentor. He's squeezing my shoulder even as I'm talking to you. Just he is he is my support in this in this job this is a, you know the job that I have it's an amazing and it's wonderful and it's incredible but it's often extremely sad tough very painful sometimes you have to tell people tough things but he's always there to help and support me so I'm able to do that let's have another question shall we Lori had said that she had a cheery visit from people who oh, she knew a cheery like happy oh okay visit from it seems from people who I knew but they had never met here and that's why she had asked that oh, question. Oh right okay nice. Um,
Denise has a heartfelt thank you for you. Good morning, Denise. She said that last Thursday was the day before her birthday and her father, who passed in 2010, always had made a big deal out of it. And the answer she received from you and him helped her so much. Oh, well, that is, thank you, Denise. It's so nice. You know, we, I know people, it's not because people are mean. It's, it's just that people don't think, you know, very few people say thank you there's not really a need but it's always appreciated anyway so i'm just glad denise that we were able to help you and uh, that you and you had a really good birthday and i hope you did have a great birthday let's have another question you're looking very puzzled over there michelle um cindy can you please post your question again it's not showing up on our end so Cindy, you posted a question, but we haven't got it. So if you could post it again, that would be brilliant. Do we have any other questions? Um, Mary is on. Yep. And Morning. she says, it's wonderful when you speak about angels, earth angels, heavenly angels. And I love how gray eagles or the spirit world knows it all. It's fascinating. Uh, isn't it though? Uh, you know, though, here's the problem, Mary. People think that I know it all and I really don't. Uh, you know, I do seem so often to be so wise and to be so, I kind of am wise. I have a lot of common sense. I've learned a great deal doing this job. But, you know, for those people out there who think that because I do this, I must know everything. Uh, no, <laughs> not even, not even, you know, a tenth of everything. Uh, so, you know, so, uh, but yes, isn't it amazing that we have all of these people in the spirit world who can educate us we have gray eagle who can educate us and, and help us and show us you know how how we should be or how we need to be and um uh gray eagle we have the gray eagle book which i don't know if it'll, it'll be out next year i keep threatening to have it, it uh the the gray eagle book is filled absolutely filled and i shouldn't hold it to myself should i it's not fair for me to hang on to it uh, and hang on to that wisdom all for myself but it'll it'll be published i guess when it's right but soon yes greg is saying to me that i'm the one who's holding it up and i'm the one who needs i need to sort of get it together and sort it out maybe that's my project for next year but uh the book is called um uh greg speaks and uh the subtitle is something like words of wisdom and it's just really uh, a question of, you know, we did a Q&A with Grey Eagle uh, over the years uh, and it, it's, been, it's been going on for years and years and years and sort of writing it down. Uh, I've had a variety of friends who have helped me through the years, you know, they sit and ask the questions and then, you know, d d sort of we record the answers and so on. And uh, so we've, I've had a variety of friends who have been uh, so, uh, well, blessed as I am to have heard his words. So at some point, when I get together and get all of this together and everybody's ideas and thoughts together, uh, we will publish the, uh, the Grey Eagle Speaks Words of Wisdom by my wonderful and amazing spirit guide, who is an Apache. Now everybody in America, you know, when I first came to America and I started talking about Grey Eagle, uh, and the fact that he's Apache, a really, really good friend of mine at the time said to me, Rosemary, you know, she, she said, it's not that I don't believe you, but she said, I, you know, now, now you're in America, I don't think you should tell people that he's an Apache. I think you should tell people that he was a Hopi or, a, or a, a, you know, something you sort of, you know, a, 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 because she said Americans, uh, when they think of the Apache, they think of the warrior. They think of scalping. They think of all of that stuff. And I said, well, you know, as much as 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 much as I thank you for your words, I'm not going. I can't. You know, I can't. It's like me saying, you know, with this British accent, you know, well, I, I was I was born in uh, Nova Scotia. Well, I wasn't. I was born in England. You can't lie about who you are or where you are. Certainly. You know, Grey Eagle relies on me to give his words in the best and the most honest way that I can, and I strive to do that. So he is Apache, and I'm proud of that because he is of the wise laughing at me. He is of the warrior race, 
and uh, who better to guide me than a warrior? My father was a warrior, he was a soldier all of his life. Grey Eagle is a warrior, and uh, I guess, and I am born a warrior too. Uh, we do need to stand and fight the good fight. Being a warrior does not necessarily mean you go out and about killing people or destroying people. Being a warrior means that you will have the strength to stand up for who you are and for what you believe, rather like Daniel in the lion's den. You know, that's being a warrior. You go in there, you, you do battle, and you don't know if you're going to come out of it, you don't know if you're going to survive it, but you do it anyway because it's for the right reasons. And I'm very fortunate to have a warrior as a spirit guide, and I'm very fortunate that I too am a warrior. And I'm very fortunate to have had the example of my father, who was also a warrior, and that's, I'm done. not going to tell you any more about how fortunate I am. Let's, do we have another question in there? We've got Cindy's question. Okay, she said, Cindy, good morning. My greatest friend, Rosie, moved, and she hasn't heard from her in years. She was getting surgery. She can no longer find her Facebook, and she comes to Cindy in her dreams. So, she wants to know if you know anything. I, I don't, darling. Um, if she's your greatest friend, or was your greatest friend, you must know her family. So my suggestion to you is to get in touch with them. Uh, now, it is. this is going to perhaps blow your mind a little bit when you hear me say this. You don't have to be past. You don't have to be deceased. You don't have to be dead in order to travel. Uh, and um, you don't have to be dead in order to come to see someone in their dreams because we all travel. Uh, in our dream state so we astral we can astral travel we can go to visit our friends so just because you're seeing her in that way Cindy does not mean that she has died so my suggestion to you is get writing to her family um, maybe you're seeing her maybe you're connecting with her because maybe she wants to uh, maybe she's lost touch with you maybe she doesn't know how to find you or or maybe she's been too sick and not able to or what have you so you know get get working on it my darling get get in touch with the family you know if she's your greatest friend you know where she was born you know where she went to school all of that stuff you know you can find anyone these days with very little effort right yeah uh, what is it that it's people easy peasy you write to is it there's a the to what there are two or three websites you can put somebody's name in and you can google them yeah there you are and it'll tell you yeah pretty close to who's closest around or how when was it they were here last or okay. where they live now and let's have another question shall we leah said that she knows the show and she's going to look it up and send you the info that she can get on it i would love that because i would love to be able to see it again of course it's my younger self who'll be watching uh but i do remember that show i remember tinica and i do remember particularly that the audience were spellbound as was i with the information that was coming out about this poor woman who lost her two children in such a tragic way they went off together brother and sister they went off together you know they were just going out to have fun and never returned so uh, i i would actually maybe i should do my own research but yes Leo, if you can find anything out for me, please let me know. Email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. Yes, anything else that we've got here? We are. It's nice and quiet. I we, don't know. Randy's on. He says hello. Hi, Randy. No questions, I take it. Here's the thing. I think this is what I'm going to ask you. I think I asked you last week. I wanted to know what your favorite Christmas carols were. We sang yesterday, didn't we, on the, uh, we on, did. on, the, on, on the show yesterday. I've not played it back. I don't want I to play it back. I have not played it back either. <laughs> but it is Christmas. I am wearing a glittery shirt for the occasion of Christmas. Uh, and um, it is the festive <laughs> season. People are going out on their office parties and so on. Michelle and I are going to have an office party. There's only the two of us, but we're going out for lunch, aren't we, today? Yes, my husband may or may not join. Okay, so uh, anyway, so we're having our own sort of little office party we might even go shopping i'm definitely going to go shopping because i've still not done my christmas stuff I'm not yet i'm going shopping i have too many things to do yeah well <laughs> right so um so uh uh 
So, are we going to sing again today? We can sing again. What do you want to sing? I don't know. Um, I haven't a clue. Uh, I'm thinking that I should sing something for Reese, but it's only I've only just thought about it. So I'm not, <laughs> not even giving it any thought. I did not give this show any thought till I sat down two minutes beforehand to to do this. But, Sarsha, um, Starshine says walking in a winter wonderland. Go on then, Starshine. Let's hear it because I don't think I know the words to that. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. I know that one. Michelle, sing. Come on, keep going. Walking along, they're singing a song. Walking in the winter wonderland. I think we skipped the verse. I think we did. <laughs> I think we skipped a verse. I don't even know. Uh, Dean, if Dean is watching, maybe he would have a suggestion for us. I don't know if he's still on or not. I haven't seen him in a little bit. Okay. So anyway, so the, the, well, that's doing that. We're bombing here with the song. <laughs> we bombed that one. Um, I could sing the Lord's Prayer. Did I sing that last week? I can't I think remember. We did sing that last week, but I'm not sure if we sung it on this one or we sung it on oh. the healing one. All right, forget that then. I'm looking for suggestions. about Silent Night? Do you know that one? Do you know the words to that one? We know the tune. If we could la la the tune, <coughs> I think we're I think we're stretching it here. I think we're stretching actually. it. Actually, I think if there are no more questions, I'm going to sort of wind <laughs> up. Um, Somebody asked me actually the other day about what I do for uh, New Year's Eve. And, uh, you know, I've never been a great one for parties. Years and years ago, of course, we had neighborhood parties. One, one neighbor or another, and very often me, we'd always have a, something for Christmas Eve and celebrating Christmas Eve and singing the old Lang Syne and all the rest of it. Uh, but um, uh, since Reese has been born, so this will be his sixth Christmas. Golly, doesn't it sound so odd, isn't that? Gorgeous idea. But anyway, this is his sixth Christmas. What we do is we, uh, we allow him to stay up on New Year's Eve and we, uh, we always get a movie. Now, if any of you are looking for a movie and you don't know the Polar Express, that is, without a doubt, one of the very best movies Tom Hanks plays in that movie. It is a great movie. It is the most brilliant. I was walking on the streets of New York last year, so it was around Christmas time, and uh, there was a, a mother in front of me with her young son, and they were, they were talking about wanting to watch a movie, and they didn't know which movie to watch, and they were going back and forth. But of course, as I always do, I interrupted, excuse me, might I've been listening to your conversation, might I make a suggestion? And they this boy was sort of seven or eight years old and never heard of the Polar Express. So I said, do watch it because you'll absolutely love it. It is movie. one of those such magical things and Reese watched it. He was only what he would be four years old when we first watched it, but he was into it. And every single year he asks, Can we watch the Polar Express? So when I go next Tuesday, we'll be watching the Polar Express. But what we usually do is we pick a movie. It could be sort of any sort of Christmassy movie. And we pick a movie and we, um, and we watch that. We have a, like a little smorgasbord of, of, uh, of stuff. We have cheeses and crackers and stuff like that. We put that on the table. We've already had a good dinner, by the way, before then. So we sort of put food out on the table, which Reese loves, because he loves to eat crackers and cheese, and he's staying up late, so he thinks that's good. And of course, at some point, he falls asleep on the sofa, and we have to finish watching the movie. Uh, and uh, and then we carry him safely to bed. We, we do wake him up when the ball drops. Uh, when it's midnight, we sort of, well, we switch to that. And uh, so we wake him up, we happy new year and we do all of that stuff as a family and we usually have my friend Karen from Canada with us and we do all of that we gently put him to bed and that is the best thing to do on New Year's Eve if you have children just make it a magical time for them and just 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 make it yeah make it into something special if you don't believe that children should stay up until midnight well you know then 
hey, have an, have an early New Year's Eve, the, do, but do something special with your family. Um, it's all very well going to parties, and I love going to parties. Don't misunderstand me. I love going to parties and so on, but there's nothing nicer, nothing more perfect. Snowing outside, it's freezing cold, and you're inside watching a good movie and holding your child or your grandchild in your arms and being able to kiss that child. And so Happy New Year, whisper it in his ear, and that's the most joyful thing you can do. So that's my New Year's Eve. So that's what I should be doing this New Year's Eve. My daughter tells me she might have a date for New Year. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? That's I what hope, we do every year for New Year's. I hope, I hope, you know, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, please don't think that Christmas and New Year is about spending money. Because it isn't. Your kids can make their own toys, they can make presents for each other. It's not about spending, it's about the, the joy and the love of family and holding family close to you. And just remember that, remembering that no child's stocking should go empty. We can always afford, all of us, to you know find a, a family or find a charity that you, I think you're having a toy run this yeah, we're doing weekend. a very large toy right. run for Toys for so, Tots. So, you know, uh, Michelle's um, a biker organization is doing the Toys for Tots run. Mm -hmm. So if you out there know of a family who is struggling, uh, if you can't give to them, please get in touch with the organizations that you know who can help them out. No, there's no reason why anyone should go uh, hungry or, you know, and we're all neighbors and it's called giving and that's what Christmas is about and that's what New Year is about it's rem reminding us to give I would rather have a turkey leg on a child's plate than on my own think about it I'd rather get feed someone else and go hungry myself because I know that if I'm going to go hungry it's not going to be for very long there are people out there who need us there are the homeless who need us there you know just please 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 all of you Pay attention to what's out there and please give, give, give of yourself, of your heart. Not talking about money, talking about giving of yourself, giving of your heart, giving of your love. Every time you pass a homeless person, if you would like to join with our hand, healing hands around the world, we send out healing prayers. If I go past a homeless person or if I go past a person who looks as if they're in pain, an old lady who can't walk very well, that might be me actually sometimes, but you know what I'm saying. If you go by someone who needs help, just say a little prayer because God is listening. If you remember, I told the story a couple of weeks ago uh, about finding the needle in the haystack and I think that was on our Wednesday healing hand, uh, hands around the world show and I talked about finding the needle in the haystack and how God knows exactly where all of us is and so if God can find us you know then he can help us find others uh, and that's our role and that's what being an angel in training is about that's what uh, that's what it's about when we try to help our angels out. We try to give in the best way that we possibly can. Again, no one is asking you to go out and spend money, but a smile is worth more than, more than any dollars to a person who hasn't received a smile in a long time. A kind word, a, a, a gentle touch, um, you know, just, you know, a, a warm blanket. There are lots and lots and lots of things that you can do for people, um, you know, without without it costing you a single solitary penny. So please think of that this year. That's what we're going to do. We're now going to, Michelle is going to put this up and download and upload and do all of that stuff. We actually um, have two, three more little things. Go, f go for it then. Dean said that we should be singing Santa Baby, the Eartha Kit version love Eartha Kitt. She's my, probably my all-time most favorite singer ever. And then we have Carol who said, Hi Rosemary, I've been going through Hi, a lot and it's been very stressful and it's affecting my health. Do you see anything getting better? When you learn, Carol, and Gregel is reiterating this for me, when you learn to say no to people, when you learn and you fully understand that give to yourself first. It's alright to be selfish with you because if you keep 
doing what other people want you to do. If you keep going out there and giving, giving, giving to others or saying yes when you know full well that you should be saying no, uh, you, you, you're depleting your energy. You're not going to be any use to anybody. But when you start and value yourself, your own self, you learn to say yes to the things you want to say yes to and no to the things you know you shouldn't say yes to because that's a huge part of your issue here. Uh, then things will absolutely get better for you. So I advocate selfishness, not to the point where you're walking away over everybody else, but please learn to be a little selfish with yourself, my lovely. It will help tremendously. Anything? Are you ready for our last one? Oh, do, do, oh yes, do I want it? <laughs> you actually do. It's Craig from yesterday. He says, hello, Rosemary. Great chatting with you yesterday. Looking forward to 2020X. Oh, thank you. Thank you, darling. Uh, yes, we, we, I, I saw that you guys had uh, texted me. I understand you had an, uh, an amazing night. Uh, I did speak uh, briefly to our mutual friend. Uh, she was looking a little worse for where I think you had a really, really good night. Uh, and I'm really looking forward in, and I, and I will then mention, yes, uh, that I'm going to be in England, hopefully, 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 I'm going to be in England, uh, also briefly in Italy, at, uh, hopefully at some point during next year, I'm not sure when, possibly through the summer months, because that's when my darling boy has his school holidays, so I'm hoping to take Samantha and uh, Reese, my daughter's big, a big birthday this year, so I'm hoping to take them. And Craig, uh, Keeping my fingers crossed, we suggest we. Left, I mentioned it to you briefly yesterday, but it was in a very noisy place. Uh, we're going to see if we can try and organise an event in England. So, for anyone, I mean, Holland is a, a hop and a skip. Uh, Germany is a hop and a skip. Italy and so on and so forth. It doesn't take very long to get from all of these places to go to England. So, if you want to know more about the events, we've. We don't even have a date yet, so don't get too excited. But once we get a date, Craig and our mutual friend are go we're going to um, to definitely organize something. I hope. I hope Craig's listening. Craig says, is yes, it, is brilliant it? night. Fingers crossed here too, and he's going to do his best. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to see if we can plan. Uh, at least one event while I'm in England, maybe even two or three. You never know what's going to happen. So, you know, again, if you want to know more, we will not just put you on our email, on our email list. You have to request it. So, but if you want to know what's going on, please send us an email, rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. We will absolutely put you on the email list once you've requested it. Uh, that The same goes for healing. If you'd like to be on our he mailing list for our healing, uh, or uh, if you'd like a consultation, um, again, you know, post it in the subject line so that Michelle knows exactly where to put you, which folder to put you into, so that way we can get to you uh, uh, quicker. So thank you, Craig, and yes, I think you, I know you had a good night. Uh, as I say, I spoke to, to, to our mutual friend this morning, and I shall be talking again to that friend uh, later on today uh, because I've got a prezi from from that person uh, uh, to, to open, but I'm not going to open until we're face to face on, on you see, FaceTime. It's FaceTime, Skype. You never have to be far from anybody at all. You can connect with them really easily. So, you know, it's sort of not like we're it's not like we're like years ago we sent those cards which said you know uh, even though you're far away I'm thinking of you now you just dial up and there you are and it's free people it's free you can do it for free to speak to anyone in the world for free how about that that's it uh, so um, again email me rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com I am on with Al Pisano tomorrow in our everything is attitude show that will be um, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I had to think about that for a minute. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we should be on on there. I'm not quite sure what the subject's going to be. It's probably going to be probably going to be talking about joy and how we can get the most out of 
the joy in life because I know that so many of us have a really, really tough time, really hard time. And it's all very well for me sitting here looking pretty, saying to you, find the joy. Yeah, well, you know, it's easy to say and not so easy to do. I get that because I've been in that place and I know how sometimes it's so, so hard to find the joy, but we can do it. In the meantime, till I see you again, please, please, please have a very, very, very blessed rest of the day and a very blessed rest of the week and weekend. And we shall see you very soon. Uh, now I've got to figure out, is it the top or the bottom, Michelle? I've got to top. figure out where to where to click. So sorry about my finger, everybody, but there we are. You'd think there'd be a button for this, wouldn't you?